doing? I'm just, she was just playing around. Literally, I walk in here and she's just playing around. I'm gonna get some on video. Well, hello, precious girl. You look like your mama. Yeah, good mom. Good mama. You're a pretty girl, huh? Yeah, pretty girl, huh? You can play around? Huh? What do you think? You got full tummy. Yeah, hello. You got a full tummy. She's still figuring out. Apparently dad came down before I actually came in and pasted and dipped her. And she was underneath the gate in the concrete over there. <laughs> we had to drag her out. Yeah, my daddy says you're really heavy. Yeah, you were really heavy. Well, Ty said she got a little video of this one bouncing around last night. So, yeah, if I remember you would have already seen that. Kind of got lucky with Bam Bam's group. It was a good thing. Um, all the yearlings came in and a couple of two-year-olds and one older cow. So they got some better grain this morning. And at like midnight last night, a cow and a calf were just raising hell and obviously not together. One on one side of the creek, one on the other. They weren't sure what was going on though. So, yay, out in the mud. Check that out. Had to move a few around. Them uh, big fancy Duracell LED flashlights come in handy for that. I was hoping to get out of here before they all came in. You know, just save me walking the plank, throwing some grain, but I'll do it. The problem is, Dino, Dino the dumbass, he came in too, which means, yeah, kind of good grain for him, but I gotta get some in from these others first. And speaking of tiling in a video, what do you know? My phone just vibrated and said she sent me a video, so that would be the one. Many moves, she was down there bellering while I was feeding the others. 612 here, she was in here going, are you going to feed me? Are you going to feed me? Can I have some breakfast too? And hey, 232 there. she got the, the youngest calf out there? Or the second, I guess the second of the youngest calf. And uh, really too bad Dino walked away because his whole head is black. He's got two or three mud holes dug out there. The only thing white is around his eyes. Boomer walked in, made him turn around. He was checking out somebody, and she's not in here now. Oh, well. And yeah, babies can reach you just barely. But they got their own up there in the corner, so. Anyway, overcast so far this morning, and it was supposed to be a nice sunny day, so we'll see what happens. Oh, let's see how long this goes. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, somebody thought better of going in there, huh? Yeah, some cows just don't want the dog in there. Once the calf's a few days old, they usually don't care, but... You know, being yesterday's baby, yeah, she don't want to see the dog in there. Yeah, he hadn't been rubbing in the mud at all, has he? But then you look, <laughs> reverse patches, instead of having red around the eyes. He's white around the eyes. Yeah, at least he got his treat this morning. Mama says, dog, go away. Dog's life. Just lay on the cool concrete floor and relax. We're underneath the 5288. That's a little damp there. And there. And there it just looks like shit. 
that's a spot you really don't get in to clean very well. And I did a really good job pressure washing yesterday and never got to that. Of course, maybe if I could have seen to do it, I could have come through those holes and got some of that. But And yeah, laying down here, my head's toughening up. But, oh, little things I'm noticing now. There's a two-piece four-bolt flange right there. Hmm. Apparently, it's a three-bolt flange today. But what I turned this on to show you, I got to move, sorry. Um, where'd we go? Where'd we go? Oh, come on. If I can get the flashlight and the phone in the same... Okay, there's a fitting dead center of the screen. It's all wet. So, I'm kind of deciding that it's not the O-rings that go to the, between the housing, because there's no trail out of there. Not that you can see it worth a shit, but it's kind of where the light shined. The trail's from that fitting. So we either have a cracked line or just a loose fitting. Loose fitting would be nice. I mean, why would it be loose? I don't know, but um, I don't think we've changed any lines on this one. On the 3394, we've changed a couple of them, but all that stuff's on the other side, and that's a little bit easier to get to. Well, I shouldn't say all that stuff. The lines we've changed, and most of the hydraulics is on the other side, but the valve bodies, I think, are still on this side. So, I'm hoping we just dodged a bullet. At least dodged a hell of a pain in the ass, because the only way I'm finding to take those valves out is to actually take the tie bolts out. But, I mean, it's the base has to be bolted to the transmission one way or the other. Or to the rear end, whichever you want to call it. But it's kind of interesting we're missing a bolt on that flange. I don't know if it's broke or if it's just gone. If it's just gone, it shouldn't be too bad. If it's broke, it might stay that way for a while. Apparently, well, yeah, I don't think it's got much pressure on it because that's either just a dump back into the reservoir or it's suction for the pump. Got a feeling it may be suction for that pump. Assuming that's a pump. And uh, yeah, like 99.9% .9 sure that is a pump. Sure looks like one. That looks like one of the switch plate in it, but yeah, obviously not adjustable switch plate. Well, we just fired it up. That nut is tight. I tried to tighten it and she couldn't budge it. So uh, we're going to say the line's probably cracked. I just fired it up and moved one of the valves and it's squirting out around the nut and the tube. So, and that little bugger cruises up to the front. And sorry, it's right there. Not too bad to change. We'll get a hose, change it out to a hose. Those fittings should be JIC. So that's what we're going to do. Can't get it today, but we'll get it apart today. And tomorrow I'll get to go on a field trip. I haven't been to town for a while to at least any of the parts places. Yep. yep, the next generation is learning why engineers are assholes. See engineers. that wrench? She's almost on the fitting. Yeah. And there's no room to turn anything. Because, yeah, you can kind of see it near to the light. That's the line that's got to come off. And it's behind everything. And there's not a whole lot of room back there. Then I take her light away and she can't see anything. Guess what? It's not ready. And she can't decide what size it is. Well, that makes it nuts. We know the nut's 11 sixteenths, but the uh, like elbow that it goes into... 
course, it looks like she just put a 11 16 on the elbow it's into, but it's kind of hard to hold that elbow with the direction it needs to because you can't get her inch in that way. So up and down and hold the twist on it, at least give it a little support. Oh. Took her a little bit to get that fitting. No room to turn her inch. She ended up with a little crescent wrench because it would fit in. And, and now she's fighting she's on her extension to get to the clamp that holds that line. And I was looking for an 11 16 12 point to cut to make a two branch out of. So I got a good set of 6.2 branches, but you know, when you don't have any clearance to swing it. And guess what I found? It was complete with a custom handle. That's a pin that come on a feeder section for a pin into a wall. Um, I found that and she says, oh sure, now that I got it where I can do it with my finger. I figured timing was right. And yep, yep, see finger. And lesson learned, right? One flat at a time, ain't it fun? No. If I can get my hand in there, I can do that. But there's a rod in the way. Sometimes it pays to be so, short, by the way. She's having fun. If her arms were about six inches longer, that'd be a little easier. Yeah, well, God made me freaking short. But other end's off, this end's almost off. Well, she can get it with her fingers, it'll be off in a minute. Clamp's off, and luckily the clamp was a one-sided clamp in a slot, so as soon as the bolt was loose, it slid down out of the way. Just means we probably have to take it out and change it to hold the hose later, but that's okay. It may come out and use a zip tie to hold the hose there, It'd be just as well. So, anyway, almost there. If the damn thing at focus, see the silver strip vertical? Toward the bottom of that, there's a dark dot in it. That'd be the culprit. Right there at the tip of my thumbnail. Kind of looks like maybe a speck of dust or something might have gotten in there. Could be rust. I don't know. But uh, that's shiny from working a little bit, which there's no no ridge there or anything. But, well, I shouldn't say that there is. It might even have a crack right there. I'm using the cheaters and haven't been able to find a crack yet. But there is a pinhole. God, I wish that would focus so you could see it. Kind of see it there. Um, I can't see anything from the inside, but you know, it's kind of a pain in the ass looking in that small of a tube. But that's our culprit. So, yeah, hose for that won't cost much. That line probably cost 10 times more than a hose. And probably got to wait six weeks to find one. Unless we're lucky, you know, since we don't have a Case IH Depot in Portland anymore. Or in, uh, where was it? Not Clackamas, but over that direction somewhere anyway. We had two of them. Then when they decided they weren't going to have any, they just took both of them away. So the nearest one is <laughs> Reno. Either come out of Reno or comes out of Southern California, one or the other. Seems like most of the stuff comes out of Reno. And the good thing is, since it's the closest parts depot, they actually aren't too bad about getting it here quick. But I guarantee they got the hose in stock. And even though that's a flare tube, that should be a JIC fitting that it's on. So that shouldn't be too bad. It looks like a number six JIC, give or take. So tomorrow I'll run into the Case IH dealer and say, make me one. So, anyway, that's the day. Been a little on the lazy side. And it's been overcast and half sunny and overcast and half sunny all day. Not too bad. But, what was it, 57 degrees last time I looked, I think. So, in the meantime, Ty was going through the book. She's telling me all this stuff. And I'm going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is actually the valve body, but you know, this is the that'd be pictured from the. Oh, that's the end cover, so that's the inside. Um, the fitting we're taking, we took it off of. It'd be like right in here, pointed forward. 
So anyway, that's what we got. It's sitting here with caps over the ouch caps over the fitting for now. Hey, in the morning we'll throw that on and probably just easier where that clamp was. We'll take that clamp off and wrap a piece of hose around the new hose and put a zip tie on it. Easier if you got to mess with it again anyway. Then this thing can go back together. The other thing we want to do while it's in here though is the greaser for the axle pivot. You know, the stabilizer side, that's not too bad. It's just right there. It always takes grease. But the other side's into a blind hole and the grease circ is on the bottom. So where's all the weight of the tractor against the orifice where the grease comes in? There. I don't know if I can show you or not, but it's up there somewhere. Somewhere in there. Um... It never likes to take grease. I mean, we make it take grease usually. And, you know, the grease monkey, she wants to fix that. So I think we're going to probably take the 20 ton jack and put underneath that front bolster, put a few blocks in there and get some weight off it. See how loose it is. Hopefully it's not too loose because I don't want to change that bushing. Um, there's a chance the bushing could have turned and, uh, Holes blocked. If so, we'll just run a drill through the hole and make a new hole in the bushing and get some grease in it. And the other thing while it's in here, this tire, if you look at it, is worn really, really even. I mean, there's a little scuff off the outside, but not much. It'd be great to turn them around on the wheel, but I'm not going to go to that much bullshit. The other one, on the other hand, it's getting pretty thin on the outside. We broke the upright off on the other side. It's been broke off right here. And, uh, you know, God, that's been 20, 25 years ago, I suppose. Um, when something breaks and twists and you get it back as straight as you can and you get it where you think you're in the right spot. And, you know, 20 years later, that tire's worn more than this one. It is what it is. So I think we're just going to swap tires from side to side. Make them turn the other direction for a while. Maybe they'll last longer. But anyway, that was our Sunday. Other than that, calf has its shots and tagged and tattooed now, and she's doing really well. And Brooke just got home from working at Maury's, and Becky had to work today, so she was gone. She got home just a little bit ago, too. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get rid of the cheaters. Yes, I love my cheaters. Those have been in that drawer. Well, they were in the bottom drawer over there before this toolbox was here. They've been in around here for a long time. There's another pair right here. These are one. I've had these for a long time. I don't remember where they came from. I don't remember if Dad picked them up for me or what. But uh, they're going to go in the service truck at some point. They need to get out of here anyway. So, thank you all for watching. And, uh, yeah. We'll get this thing done tomorrow, one way or the other. Well, we better. If they don't have a hose, though, I got another place I can go for a hose, too. Not a big deal. Run out to the guy that I got all the stuff for the sprayer for. All the hydraulic stuff for that. He usually has about everything there is to have. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you all have a good week.